Hi, Jonathan Perkins, location lead and PFR agronomist here at our Effingham site, right back behind us. Along with me today, Joe Bolte. He's our herbicide specialist and our uh, technician here at the site. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about the replant threshold spotting in studies that we've touched on a little bit from last year. So Joe, brand new to us last year, right? So what are we trying to accomplish here? So, you know, if we look at our long-term data, we always talk about early planted soybeans that we can have 100,000, that's our, eco our economic optimum seeding rate for early planted soybeans. But if we know and if we get harsh conditions, are we gonna have a uniform 100,000 out there? Probably right? not. <laughs> so we're probably not. So we wanna simulate in a real world scenario, how low can we go with our populations? Not a uniform population, but a sporadic population. Some of you may be wondering, well, how do we do that? Well, what we do is we take our precision planting 80 cell plates and we basically went through and we actually blocked off 30 of these cells. So now we got a 50 cell plate and this is not uniform. So the idea behind it is basically as we plant, you're gonna see that 2020 monitor, you're gonna get a little bit of red, you're gonna get a little bit of yellow. It looks like a really bad day when you're planting it, but mm -hmm. we're trying to do that on purpose with that. And basically we're looking at some of the different seeding rates as we go lower to simulate what happens when we get an ununiform stand. Should we make that replant scenario at that point? Should we spot some in? So we got some other studies going on with that scenario as well, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. So we're using those plates for both what we call a replant threshold, like Joe mentioned, as well as spotting in. So in those instances, the replant threshold is like Joe said, how low can you go? Can you go down to 40,000? You know, and this is simulated by that plate. So we know that that's not gonna be for every field, right? But it gives you an instance to where it is spaced sporadically instead of that uniformity like what we mentioned so gave us an idea of what things you know looked like last year so joe what was our number last year wasn't it like seventy thousand or above is where we were okay economically speaking and it didn't pay to replant and come back out there at that point with the uniformity so we can get that from early season leave that stand and accomplish that now when we talk about in terms of if we come in and we spot in so we have it simulated we plan on a 10 degree angle and i showed a little footage of joe with the uav you know i was out here trying to capture some imagery so you'll see that in this video we go on a 10 degree angle and we plant 60,000 sporadically with those plates. Then we come back and we put in another 60,000, 80,000, 100,000 in those increments. So we have some different treatments set up there to give us more stand to help you answer, does it pay to help spot in like that? Okay, so we're looking at that. We're also looking at planting 150,000 standard after that, just to see what later planting might do for that later on in the time frame. So Joe, let's review last year's data a little bit, maybe what we could expect to see this season. Yeah, so last year what we noticed is, you know, if we had a stand, even though it's sporadic, greater than 70, um, we basically were better off to keep that stand compared to coming in later and planting a full 150,000 stand or a full stand a couple weeks later because we know early planting date pays at that point as well. But once we started to get to 60,000, that's where we've seen that, yeah, we're probably better off to replant because the theory behind this study is to know how low can we go versus across the alleyway there, that's the replant threshold. So now we know how low we can go. Well, what decision should we like, should we spot in? Should we tear it out and replant? So this study helps tell us basically how low we can go on the study across the, the field, across the alleyway there. Absolutely, and as we know, planting date definitely has an impact, right? So we're targeting a time frame of May 1st through the 15th as the ideal window to plant this initially, giving it at least a couple weeks before we come back in with that 150,000 or spotting in those additional plants. So that's gonna play a factor, right? We don't know, that may impact the data depending on when our sites get planted and show us some differences. So multi-year data, multi-location data, that's what we're after here to get better data compiled to help all of you make better decisions. So. Thanks again for watching us here. Jonathan Perkins with you today. Joe Bolte. Stay tuned for more on this in the future.